signal to noise ratio explained for the beginner. So stay tuned. Turn me up, bro. Shit. You know what it is. So, what is signal to noise ratio? By definition, signal to noise ratio is a measure used in science and engineering that compares the level of a desired signal to the level of background noise. So in essence, SNR is the ratio of signal power to noise power, often expressed in decibels, and a ratio higher of one to one or greater than zero dB indicates more signal than noise. It could be a vocal going into a microphone, guitar, bass, some type of instrument, horn, trumpet, flute, whatever, being captured by a microphone or a guitar or bass directly inputted into your interface. And what's noise? So if you crank up your speakers all the way up and you hear like a white hiss, a low vibrating hum, or some electronic static, that is what's called the noise floor. So in essence, when the signal to noise ratio is one to one, when you're raising the volume up, you're also raising the noise floor up. And when you raise the noise floor up, you hear more of that white, static, nasty little hum that's undesirable in recordings. So what you want to do is have more signal than noise, always. So when you're cranking the volume up, you're also raising the noise floor, but the ratio is much higher. So the noise floor is much less audible. So I'm going to show you a few examples of what's an optimal signal, something that's too low and something that's too distorted. So on my screen here, I have three examples of what's good, what's too low, and what's too high. So you're wondering why the WAV files look like this. Well, I zoomed in. So in Pro Tools, all you had to do is click this top magnifying scope twice. So when I did that, this is showing the actual WAV file sizes. And it's very important. So in your DAW, if you're not using Pro Tools, make sure you're seeing the original WAV file size. Because if you're seeing something that's not correct, then chances are you'll be doing something incorrect. So I'm gonna start with the second one. This right here is when your gain knob is just way too low. Signal to noise ratio demonstration. As you can hear, it's very, very, very low. So I'm just gonna crank this up with the gain. As you can see, this is the noise floor. That's what it sounds like. Now, it may not seem as bad right now, but when you're starting to add plugins, compression, limiting, stuff like that, that noise floor is gonna get super loud, which will cause a problem during mixing, and you'll end up with a noisy white noise master along with your recorded vocals and sounds and instruments and stuff like that. Next, we have a signal that's too loud and distorted. As you can see, there's a haircut at the top and at the bottom. This happens when you turn the gain knob way too high and you're capturing the signal and it's distorting. Play it back. Signal to noise ratio demonstration. As you can hear, it's very, very distorted. So you don't want that at all. That's pretty much a given. The third example is the most optimum middle path of a signal to noise. Signal to noise ratio demonstration. Here you see the wave file with peaks, valleys, and no haircuts at the top, and it's not too low. And here's the noise floor right here. And as you're recording, sometimes you're louder and sometimes you're softer. You're gonna always have to change the gain knob as you're recording. So you don't clip or you don't get too much of a lower signal. If you find your mic not being able to get enough signal through the interface, then most times you're gonna have to check what type of mic you have and then seeing if you can invest in a cloud lifter or something similar to add extra clean gain to your signal. You also may need to check the back of your mic where it has a pad of negative 20 dBs all the way to zero. So make sure you have that adjusted accordingly. So I hope this explanation has helped you in some form or fashion. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.